بكت عيني بكت عيني بكت عيني على ذنبي وما لاقيت من كربي فيا ذلي ويا خجلي إذا ما قال لي ربي أما استحييته تعصيني ولا تخشى من العتب I want to begin with the story of one of my teachers that influenced me greatly. Allah blessed me to study in Arabia for many years. And one of the people who probably had the most impact on me on a spiritual level is a very famous scholar by the name of Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen. He used to live in a small village, Uneza. And I studied with him for one summer before he passed away. And I heard a lot of stories about him from his students. And of course, I saw him one-on-one -on -one as well. One of the stories that his students told me, it happened before I came that summer, was in the 80s, the king of Saudi Arabia visited the city of Uneza. And the sheikh was so famous that one of the very few people the king would visit in his house rather than the other way around. Generally speaking, the sheikh goes to the king uh, in that country. But Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen was so senior and so respected that the king visited Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen. And at that time, he used to live in a mud hut. This is back in the 80s the hut that would be constructed in those days. So the king said, let me build you a new house. And our Shaykh Ibn Uthaymeen had a very strict policy. No gifts from the king. And I have a lot of stories about that as well. He never accepted a penny from the royal dynasty. So he said, I don't need a house. The king insisted. So he said, well, if you must know, Alhamdulillah, I am building a house in Salihiyah. He mentioned a neighborhood there. So the king then moved on the conversation and then left. His students said after the king left, Sheikh, we didn't know you're building a house in that neighborhood. That's way outside the city. Why would you do that? The Sheikh said, isn't the graveyard in Salihiyah? They said, yes. He said, I'm building a house for the Akhirah. Subhanallah. When I heard that story, what struck me was the philosophy or the paradigm of our Sheikh. That for a person to say that instantaneously when the king is there, this isn't something that just comes on the spur of the moment. On the contrary, clearly, this is a person who is thinking constantly about the real house that is being built. For that answer to just come impromptu indicates that such a person, such a person is constantly thinking and preparing for the ultimate abode. And this is what separates the mu'min or the muttaqi or the muhsin from most of us here. Allah Azza wa Jal tells us in the Qur'an, تِلْكَ الدَّارُ الْآخِرَةِ This is the hereafter. And we give it to those who, who is it given to? وَمَنْ أَرَادَ الْآخِرَةَ وَسَعَى لَهَا سَعْيَهَا The one who strives for the hereafter, that person, his striving will be rewarded. The goal, the destination is in the hearts and the minds of the righteous people. These are the people, as Allah says, They are certain they're going to meet their Lord. They have no doubt they're going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does Allah say in the Day of Judgment? The people who get their book in the right hand, they pick it up and what do they say? I knew I would meet my hisab. This is the conviction that happens from the mu'min and the muttaqi. Faya dhulli wa ya khajali Iza ma qala li rabbi Ama stahiyaytah ta'asini Wa la takhsha min al-atabi Wa tukhfi al-dhamb an khalqi وتأبى في الهوى قربي فتب مما جنيت عسى تعود إلى رضا الرب تعود إلى رضا الرب